Hey Top Shelfers, welcome to Behind the Bar, where we bring you guys historic cocktails that are enjoyed every day. Today what I have for you is a cocktail known as the Covington. Now, the origins of this cocktail are very difficult to find, as I found in my extensive internet research, but I think the best possible solution to where it came from is from the Hotel Covington uh, where it was born and it is a very simple cocktail that should be delicious. It's got bourbon, it's got port, and it's got egg white and that sounds delicious. So let's start out with our coupe glass and as all things here with our recipes we are going to go with uh, chilling our glass, especially in the old way of chilling the glass, uh, which is going to be filling it with ice, throwing in some water, and letting it chill while we make our cocktail. So let us fetch some ice from our bucket, throw that into our coupe glass, and then follow that up with some water. And we are going to then set that off to the side while the glass chills down. And we can then begin making our cocktail. So we have our shaker out here. And the first thing that we're going to have is what is, uh, it calls for, I should say. Uh, it calls for a half jigger of bourbon and a half jigger of uh, port. Now I have a Quintas de, Quinta das Carvajas. I'm sorry, my Portuguese is terrible. Uh, port. So all port is uh, typically made in uh, Portugal. Uh, it's delicious. It's a, des it's a dessert wine and it has tremendous fruity smells and a great sweet aftertaste. So our recipe calls for a half jigger, which is going to be three quarters of an ounce. We're going to pour that into our shaker here. Now this is a 10 year aged tawny port. Uh, you can use different ports if you want. I really like the aged ports. They get more complex in their flavor composition, and I think that's going to work well with our bourbon since that is equally aged. Uh, for our bourbon, we're going to use Horse Soldier. It's one of my favorite Kentucky bourbons that we have. This is the bronze version, which is the cheapest of the three that they offer. There's also a silver and a gold. Uh, this runs you around 35 bucks for a bottle, maybe around 40, uh, depending on uh, where you can find it. But this is delicious, and we're going to throw in three quarters of an ounce of our Horse Soldier bourbon into this as well. maybe the absolute end of what we have. I think we'd have maybe a quarter of an ounce left there. Next, we are going to follow that up with a quarter of a lemon juice only. So we're going to half this twice and then throw it into our juicer and juice it. So we're gonna cut this up in half and I'm gonna put it down on its face, cut it up again. Now we have a quarter of a lemon and we're gonna throw that into our juicer put it down in there and we're going to take the juice out of this. Put that on in. Get nice and juicy. It should add some tremendous citrus flavor there to our already very flavorful drink. Uh, so I'm excited to see how this comes out. Next we're going to add a half teaspoon of sugar. Now uh, in the modern recipes that we have, we normally go with simple syrup, but since we're using a classic recipe, we'd probably take uh, regular granulated sugar. It doesn't dissolve as easily. That's why simple syrups are really popular and why they continue to grow in popularity starting way back in the early 1900s. But since we are getting called for granulated sugar, we're gonna use it. So with only a half teaspoon here, we're just going to pour this out. I crushed up a sugar cube here and we'll pour that on in. It's going to be very important when you're using granulated sugar to have a strainer because you don't want to have any crunch or anything like that when you're having your cocktail. The last thing that we have here is egg white. It calls for egg whites and uh, we're going to have one whole egg. I'm using cartoned egg whites here. You can use regular eggs if you want. Now mind you, you know, when you're using raw eggs, you have to be careful with it. You're kind of taking a risk no matter what. I've never had an adverse reaction, so just make sure that your eggs are newer and that uh, they've been processed properly so that you're not exposed to any possible diseases. Um, so one whole egg here is about three tablespoons, and a tablespoon is about a half a fluent ounce. So that's going to give us one and a half ounces in order to measure out one large egg. So 
pour that on in here. And you could go less. I actually am gonna go a little bit less here because I don't want this to be too frothy. Um, after all, we have really good flavors here and we don't wanna take away from any of that. Now we have all of our ingredients in there and to get a really silky smooth finish, we're going to shake this twice. First, we're gonna do a wet shake with ice and that'll get everything moving, introduce a lot of air to the egg whites. Then we're going to strain it out of the ice and then do a dry shake and that should really give you a fantastic silky smooth mouthfeel. So let's get our ice. Pour that into our shaker. Almost drop your bucket top. And then let's get shaking. Oh yeah, it sounds glorious, doesn't it? All right, we've got that on out. Now, what we wanna do is we want to strain this back into our shaker. Now that already looks really good, right? But we're gonna make this even better by getting rid of the ice and then doing a dry shake following the wet shake. So we're going to dispense of our ice here. All right, put that down and we will mix again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this sounds, smells delicious. This is gonna be silky, silky, silky smooth. Now, before we pour it out, we're going to take our now chilled coupe glass, dump out our water and ice, make sure that we don't spill anything here. And then we're going to put down our chilled coupe glass and now at last we will strain. And look at how beautifully silky smooth that is. That's what the double shake does for you. It gives you such a smooth silkiness. That's gonna be great. Uh, it almost reminds me a little bit of um, uh, when you when you beat egg whites to make, uh, what's it called? That, like marshmallow or anything like that. I can't remember how the bakers call it. Its name is escaping me. But our drink now calls for a garnish and our garnish is a sliced pineapple, which I thought was pretty interesting with the ingredients that we have in this drink. But you know, who am I to judge? So I'm gonna take my pineapple here. It's already been pre-sliced luckily. We're going to make a cut and then we're going to stick this Hopefully, there we have it. And there you have the Covington. It is really quite nice. Nice dark pinkish color. You've got that wonderful head from the frothy egg whites that have come out on top. I can't wait to give this a try. I can only tell how silky smooth and delicious this will be. Here we go, guys, the Covington. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the lemon juice carries this team so much. Oh my gosh, it's like it's like Tom Brady on his last drive of a football game. It's it's perfect because you have two very bold flavors that can work so well on themselves, uh, and that's the bourbon, and then you have the port, and those are normally enjoyed separately. But when you combine them, you need a bridge to to make sure that those two bold flavors are gonna work well together. That's the combination of the egg white and the lemon juice. The lemon juice really speaks here. And then you've got great balance coming from the bourbon and the port. They're almost a little lost from the egg white because the egg white dilutes them down so much, but it's such a well-balanced, refreshing drink. It's really delicious. The main flavor that I'm getting here actually is the lemon. So I would say without the lemon, this would probably be a relatively bland drink, but uh, just because of how much egg whites you're using. So if you don't want uh, as much uh, lemon flavor being the number one taste you're getting, lessen the amount of lemon juice you're using, lessen the amount of egg white you're using. Uh, that way you can get the bourbon and the port to speak for themselves. But this is a really good cocktail uh, as far as balance and taste. 
And uh, as always, I hope you guys get to try this for yourselves. Make it for yourselves at home. Give it to your friends. It's delicious. And uh, as always, from all of us here at Top Shelf History, cheers. Thank you.